let's talk about object-oriented JavaScript. It's not an easy concept to grasp, and JavaScript as a language is flexible enough to implement the object-oriented paradigm while allowing us developers to have full flexibility in the way we use it. So in this video, um, I hope I can give you a tutorial on how classes in JavaScript work and how I can probably show you how inheritance works. So let's create a class called person. This person class has a variable name called name and then it has a health property. Health property is private, is denoted by the underscore. And then this console log here, well, I'm just logging it to show you that this is automatically gets called when you invoke a new class or when we create a new instance of this class. Here we have several methods. This.walk is a simple method for the person class. And then we have two getters. We have a getter and a setter. So getter gets the health of this person and the setter sets the health of this person. Pretty straightforward. Let's create some new person. And we, I'm going to create two people. One is Joe and one is Alice. For Joe, we're setting the health to 100 via the set health set method. And then we're going to console log the get method of the health uh, methods. So basically, I'm going to console log their health. Now, if I run this software, this uh, program, you're going to see that when Joe is created, the constructor is called. And then the get set health, we, I'm setting it to 100, and then council logging the Joe's health, and it shows me 100. This is a pri the way we get the value of a private variable. And then I call the walk method, so it says Joe is walking. Same thing for Alice, where I created a new person, sets the health of Alice to 30, and then I get the health of Alice, which is 30. And then it says Alice is walking, because I call the walk method. Now we can create a common method for these instances by using the prototype keyword. So if I want to create a common method, I have to do the name of the class, dot prototype, dot sleep. And this is defining you know, the sleep method of this uh, class. So when the, I can immediately call this method for Joe and Alice, and it will say Joe is sleeping and Alice is sleeping. So this is a nice way to create a, dia a method for the class dynamically without uh, creating it during the definition time. Now let's explain the concept of inheritance. Inheritance in JavaScript is done via the prototype called chain. So I can explain what that means later, but first I want to show you this example here. The you can create a here I'm creating a criminal class and this class I want to inherit it from person class so to do this you have to create a criminal class uh, as a function and then I need to do person dot call this dot name so what this this is doing is is pat it's calling the constructor method of the super class which is person by passing in the variable name into it so this way the name will be set and then here I'm defining a, a variable that's specific to the criminal class called crime, bank robber. And then here I'm just logging the constructor to see when it's getting called. Now to make inheritance work in JavaScript, you have to call two more statements. One is you set the prototype of the children class to equals to you um, you can create inheritance via the object that create function, and then pass in the parent class that prototype in here, and then you have to set the criminal the children prototype constructor into itself so it knows how to call itself on the constructor. Let's talk about how to override a method of a parent class. Let's say the criminal class's sleep method. It's a bit different. You know, criminals, they don't sleep, they just rob banks. So you want to override the person's sleep method. The way we do it is, you do criminal.prototype.sleep. 
you set that to equal to a function, and then you just call just write the definition here. So this way, when you call sleep on the criminal instance that you instantiate, it will not call the person's sleep method, but it will call this method here. And if you want to add a method only to the criminal class, you can just define it via prototype also. Now this way, rob bank method will only be defined for criminal class, not for the person class. So let's give this a try and see what we have here. Here I'm creating a Bob instance of a criminal class. So when I do bob.sleep, remember this method was overwritten. So it will say criminals don't sleep, they rob banks, instead of the, this person is sleeping. And then when I call bob.robbank, which is very specific to Bob, which is the criminal class, and it says criminal is robbing a bank. And if I try to call rob bank on the Joe instance, which is a person, it doesn't have the rob bank method, so it doesn't know what it is, and therefore it's throwing an error for you. So I want to talk a little bit about the prototype chain of JavaScript. It's a concept that's not very easy to grasp. So I'm going to show you, let's, if you do array dot prototype, you can see that this array dot prototype is actually contains all the definition of the functions of what you can do to arrays. And then at the very end, there's a proto uh, variable, not a variable, a proto, um, what do you call it, key. And it's point to the object class. This means that the array object is inherited from the main object object. Now what is object object? Object object is the root object that all objects are created from. So the way JavaScript prototype chain works is that JavaScript will internally keep track of which method belongs to which classes through the concept of prototype chain. The idea is simple. When you ask an instance to invoke a method, it will look for that method in the current class's definition. If it finds it, then it will invoke it. Otherwise, it will look at the parent class of the instance to see if that method exists there, and invoke it if it found. Repeat this rule until you reach the base object object class, which all classes inherit from. So, a good standard of practice is to only modify the prototype of your own classes. You should never modify prototype of standard JavaScript objects such as math, dates, string, array, and so on. The reason is that you don't unintentionally break functionalities when you use third-party libraries who rely on the standard JavaScript objects. So I hope this tutorial cleared up some confusions about prototypical inheritance in JavaScript. It's not as simple as first few times you look at it, but hopefully it'll make sense the more you read about it. I posted some resources in the descriptions below, so check out our website for full transcript.